Okay. Today, uh, I'm going to go a little bit back to the basics since some people have asked me what's the best way to install Kali Linux on a Windows 10 machine. Uh, I cover today the installation of Kali Linux in two ways. And for both, we're going to use Workstation, VMware Workstation Pro. Um, I will do another video later later this month uh, covering the same for VirtualBox as well. Uh, so we have two options when we install Kali Linux on VMware Workstation Pro on Windows. Um, first, of course, we have kali.org slash downloads where you can get all the ISO images. Then secondly, what we have is we have the ready to start VMware images that you can find on the offensive security website. Uh, actually, if you go to kali.org slash downloads further down here, you will also see the link going to the VM download page. So why why two options? So the, the first option to be the VMware image, it's the easiest. You just download the image, you, uh, unzip, you uh, uh, uncompress the image, you add a new VM to your workstation and you use the VM, the, the VM file as it is and you just start it up and it will be ready to go in no time. So let's start with this. So for the sake of this tutorial, for the sake of this video, I've already downloaded both of the images um, to, to save some time. So we have here my usual view of VMware workstation. Uh, what we will do now is we have downloaded both of those. So you can see we have downloaded the ISO file and we have downloaded the image here. So we start with the image, we go to file, we say open. We are going to choose, ah, okay, of course, sorry. How could I forget? <laughs> For this one, we got to uh, extract it first. Let's extract it, it will be really fast. Basically, what it does is extract the uh, compressed file, and there we go. We are done. And here, in here, you have all the VM. Let me open this a little bit more. All the VMDK files, the VMX file, the config files, everything is in here, right? So we go back here now again and try this again. Sorry for that. Say open. Um, here we're gonna choose now the VMX file, which is the only one that it will open anyway. So, and we just double click this one. Give it some time and there you go. So basically this will already know the image size and everything it's pre-configured. The files, the disks, everything is already there, right? So what we will do next is basically we'll review the settings here. So for our case, I think two gig is always not enough. So as you can see, my, my machine here has 64 gig of RAM. So we gonna give this at least four gig of RAM. Um, processors, we leave it as is. The hard disk file size, it depends. I have more than a terabyte free here. That's all SSD. So um, we keep it as is. I think that's fine. And the NAT, we keep it as is for the sake of this. Uh, and we say OK to this. And that's basically it. Uh, next step already would be you power up and say you moved it. And it will boot by default. So that's all there is to it to get Kali Linux running on a virtualized environment. So let me just finish this booting up. I'm gonna be logging in. And there we go. So obviously username and password, the default that is coming, Kali and Kali. There we go. That's it, we are ready to go. By default, it comes with everything installed that Kali has. So for example, we could now say NS Metasploit Framework Database init since the first use. I sorry, of course, I have to this and yes, and there we go. Starting the database, analyzing the database and Three, two, 
one and there we are ready to go we could now run in msf console and it would work so that's all there is as you have seen it didn't even take how many minutes right to get up and running if you use the ready pre-configured vmware images um a few things to say about this is that uh the vmware tools are usually already installed so it by default everything should be working fine you could technically um, change the display settings here now if that's what you want advanced resolution uh, let's go for this one for example as you can see works out of the box you could play around with these settings as you would normally so that's it um, that covers the first approach right so we're gonna shut this down now shut down guest okay shut down that was the first approach second approach as i mentioned would be to install it from scratch as well but from 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 iso from iso completely install process right so for this what we have to do now is we have to first say new virtual machine uh for the sake of the demonstration let's use the typical approach we go here we say we decide to choose our downloaded iso file and then it is a linux probably choose any other linux later for the sake of this demonstration which will work fine we call this kali kali from iso and we go to next then again the disk size let's make it 80 gig again uh, single file for performance and we still customize the ram we make this 4096 meaning 4 gig of ram just like the other one we change this as well to at least two cores and then nut is already configured that's it close finish then we put this up and now we are as you can see it's different now we are prompted with the graphical install or install let's for the sake of this uh, tutorial let's go for the graphical install <clears throat> don't worry about that there we go english seems like a good choice uh, United States as a keyboard layout and time zone also good choice good choice there we go so now it will detect the installation media and mount it which is the ISO file in our case give it a few seconds Detecting the network interfaces. IPv4, 6, done, DHCP configured. There we go. We call it for the sake of this. We just leave it as default as Kali. Go for the next one. Domain name, we don't use any. Use account. Uh, let's just call this Sigmund in our case. In your yeah fine uh, password okay setting up the clock and there we go so now of course select the time zone so it doesn't really matter for the sake of installation right but um, you can't go back now actually uh, select your where is it sorry uh, I can't see
There we go. There we choose Philippines here. That was my mistake. I should have done that straight from the beginning. Okay, in this case, of course, you have several options here to set up the disk, right? Uh, I will use, for the sake of the speed, I will use guided use entire disk, but you could set up now a LVM, you could set up a guided use entire disk, uh, encrypted LVM, password encrypted, manual, whatever, right? For the sake of having this done quite fast, let's use this one, which will be just as fine. It detects the hard disk that we have created at the start when we created the VM. And then let's separate at least those basic partitions, which is the standard that you should do anyway. This will review again the partitioning that you just set up. Seems to be quite fine. You could play around now with this and change this if you want to. In our case, we just say, okay, we'll write these changes to disk and we say continue. And it will then actually start installing the base system, which doesn't take too long. Sorry for this, but it's just simply the time it takes. I don't want to cut out anything here uh, in case we run into some issues that I can show as well how to fix it. So there we go. Uh, basically, let's just leave this as it is for now. Uh, it's the default settings and you can, of course, play around. You can use GNOME here, KDE, KDE or, or any of these things. Right for now, for the sake of this demonstration, let's leave it as default and say continue. Um, it will retrieve the required files from the ISO file. Um, this should not take much longer. As we can see, well, while we are looking at that, right, so uh, let me talk a little bit more about the differences between installing it from, from scratch versus using the uh, image, right? So if you're just completely new to Kali, it's Probably the easiest just to use the image. Use the image, it is very fast, as you have seen. It's very fast to set up. There's no customization needed. And that gets you through installing it and or getting it up to run within five minutes, right? Installing it from scratch has it, it obviously advantages because you can completely customize the file system layout, the partition, the file systems, whatever you want to modify or customize, you can do with that way, right? So having said that, uh, uh, th there's always preferences for different people. For me, I don't mind using the image because it's just simply fast to get it up and, and, and running in no time, right? So while we wait for this now, let's actually fast forward to the time when we completed the install. Okay, so we are through this part. Uh, now, as you see, we are done with the basic installation. It's asking us now to install the grub loader. So we will say yes to this, we say continue. And then we just use the one that we have. It's, that's the only one. And now we are finishing up the installation. Doing all the final steps, which shouldn't take too long this time. There we go. Once this is done, um, 
we're just gonna boot it up uh, as well just like the other one and you will see it's not different from the image so we'll just wait for this to complete okay as you can see we are done now with the installation it's time to boot so we're gonna say continue uh, so just as a precaution we can now make sure this is not connect again and put up because we don't need it anymore and we're gonna say continue rebooting and you will now see the first boot and as you can see booting in one second there we go and there we are same t4 hey of course and oh how ignorant of me since i specified an account of course i have to use that <laughs> my bad i'm sorry for that and then there we go and now we could do again the same thing we could say sudo msfdb in it and again supply our password and it will do the same as we have seen before and then we're ready to fire metasploit just as an example the rest looks just exactly the same and this is it for for the day so we have seen the two major ways of installing kali linux on a on a windows 10 machine using vmware workstation i am gonna also do a video on the same using virtualbox which is not that much different, but just has a few things that you need to be aware of. With this, I thank you for uh, watching. Just uh, subscribe to my channel if you like that video, and uh, I'll see you again soon.